Hey everybody, today we have a beast, a beautiful beast to look at. Uh, there's nothing technically wrong with it. This is a digital projection. D-Vision 30XL. It's a 7500 lumen dual lamp, large venue projector. I uh, picked this up on everybody's favorite marketplace for a reasonable price. Um, I've always wanted one. I, uh, long story short, the uh, lamp assemblies these use have uh, timer modules built into them, and they were actually the first timer module I ever learned or learned, figured out how to reset. The uh, lamp assembly in question goes by a few part numbers. I know it is the 400,000. It is also known as the, there you go there, 9, or R9801272. And it's also, uh, I want to say like 103 something. Um, also, these are known as the 400-0500-00, as listed here. It's a 300 watt. But, like I said, the projector works. Uh, when I received it, uh, one of the reasons I received it was the lamp 2 was not being recognized. Turned out, it just wasn't mounted right. They didn't have it square when they locked the uh, things in, so the chip wasn't making connection, and then therefore it just didn't recognize. So that might be why I got it so inexpensively. Well, inexpensively for this model projector. It wasn't cheap, but it was cheap enough that I could actually afford it. <laughs> you know, instead of the 15 or 30 grand or whatever. Pardon me, whatever these were new. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to look inside, really give it a good internal once-over, see if it needs any cleaning, maintenance. Uh, I, wanna, I want to um, use it for a bit. Uh, just to enjoy it, and then I'm going to see about selling it, or seeing if, I don't know, maybe there's somewhere I can rent it to, or something like that, because it's a really nice projector. It's 1080, dual lamp, you know, 7200 lumens. And uh, I also actually may take the time and connect up some of my test gear, because I've, even though I can reset the uh, lamp timer assemblies, or lamp timers on these lamp assemblies, I don't really know what the data means. So I may hook up some wires and try and sniff the data lines just to understand what's what. But before we do any of that, let's take the top off. It has those special security torques. Well, this one doesn't, some of them do, but I'm just using the uh, security torques bit as you can see right there. So let's pop all these silver screws out along the mid area. Might want to pop the lens out, but I'm hoping I can take it apart while leaving the lens in. Last time I worked on one of these, it needed a firmware update. You'll see these sold now as uh, Barco, I think. Huh, that one was actually a little loose. Oh, and then up here. And then I need to open the uh, lamp doors, I think. Actually, I'm just going to pop both lamps out. And this is the lamp assembly that wasn't installed right. It was kind of, instead of hitting those pins there, those pogo pins, it was only kind of hitting some of them. But that's the lamp assembly. This is an original. 
I can't believe they get away with charging what they charge for these. There's actually a thermal fuse down on that wire in there that if these get hot, it'll actually pop the thermal fuse and open up the connection between the uh, lamp and the wire. These just use a uh, Phillips 310. It's a 300 watt, 21.8. These can be replaced, and I know how to reset these. And I also have tons of pre-reset modules for these, so. Actually, here's a little story. Many years ago, when I had one of these in that needed the firmware update, I called uh, Digital Projection to try and get some info on getting the firmware update. And I don't know if how news travels or something, but they knew who I was and they wouldn't talk to me. So I called back and pretended I was somebody else and they talked to the pretend person. So I was able to find out what I needed to, but it was kind of funny. There we go. Nice metalized plastic cover. And then just the, wow, just the gorgeousness that is digital projection. It's a little dusty, definitely is going to need a cleaning, but let's get you guys over top so you can really see what's going on here. I mean, look at that engineering. You know, these are made in Norway. I, I don't have any um, proof, but anecdotally, the insides of these always seem a lot like an in-focus. Every time I see inside a nice in-focus, like one of the older ones, they use these just kind of darker colored green boards, thicker, nicer looking layout. Just, they look like they're made really well. So I don't know if in focus and projection design had a relationship at one point. Wouldn't be uncommon for an OEM, you know, to build for multiple labels, but this thing's just beautiful. So over here, these look like, yeah, these are serial ATA wires. Yep, that's a serial ATA cable. And they even say ATA on the wire, but it's curious that the cable's going from here, a pair of them, to here. I wonder if that's maybe for these exports. Maybe there's a hard drive that can connect up to that. Maybe it's for the USB. It's hard to say. See, the things that make me think in focus are when I see stuff like this. I see stuff like this inside older in focus projectors. Oh, yep. And we're definitely going to need to do some cleaning. There's all that dust we're going to get in there. We'll get that out. So, this is going to need a cleaning. Let's kind of do a quick electronic tour. So the lamp assemblies go in here. Here's our door switches. So when the doors close, you can hear that. Nice positive click to it, which is nice. And let's see, temperature sensor, like I said. Here's our color wheel cables, dual color wheels. You can actually run this on one lamp or the other or both. So depending on your brightness needs, you can get a little bit extra lamp life or, you know, switch back and forth between them and get a whole lot of lamp life. Then you can even see it marked on the board here, memory one, and over here memory two. These go to the little boards that the uh, timer chips plug into. These ICs here, these two I think, Drive the color wheels, big voltage regulator, more voltage regulators. These are fans. I suspect those uh, memory modules go through this flat cable, which then feed in to where the DMD is. We have a power supply over here. And then all the control stuff and DMD and just assorted fans. There's a, uh, there's one ballast. 
And the other probably is on the other side. Yep, there's the other ballast. So we have ballast and fans, lamp fan, lamp fan, ballast cooling fan, ballast cooling fan. And then down in here we have a DMD cooling fan. So the back has this really handy LCD display. LCD, LCD display, liquid crystal display display. It has this really nice LCD panel that gives us the status of everything. And I think, if I remember, I should be able to, let's see if I, I think if I open this, Does that that yeah, flips out okay? We can disconnect that. Disconnect that and that. I'm gonna leave the power connector. Let's see if this will. Yep, that'll come up out of the way now. So we can move. Actually, let's look at this back control panel. Here's the back of it. I actually, see a few things worth mentioning. We have a uh, sensor here. That's pressure or temperature. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to look that up. MP. What's that say? MP. Uh, come on. There we are. MP3 H6115. Or K101, oh, that's probably the date code. It's probably that top one, that MP3H6115. I suspect it's a temperature sensor, but it may be a, a humidity sensor too. I don't think it's one of those MEMS devices, but it might be. Let's see, then we have a crystal. It's a good oscillator. Some power stuff. That's where power comes in here. I was curious about the uh, the serial the serial ATA stuff because that comes in. It's definitely pinned out as serial ATA. Are they not used? And is that battery bad? We may we're going to check that battery and see if that's any good. I have another one if I need it. I was thinking maybe the serial ATA plugs go to those ports because it seems like they go up into that unpopulated area. Looks like they're feeding into that chip that is not existent. So we have a uh, Got a pair of buttons up here. Let's see, it's got a reset. Oh no, that's a reset light it's pointing at. Hmm. Upper 3D, lower main. I don't know what that means unless that's this stuff. And then we have the wire that feeds out to the LCD. There's the LCD. So that's the whole back assembly. I'm going to set that over here because this is where we want to get. I want to get in there and get that cleaned That's way out. better. Fans are all clean. Here, I'll show you guys. We'll go a little floating tour here. Got that fan clean, that fan clean, this fan very clean. And then we got the uh, lamp fan and ballast fan over there nice and clean. Got all of the stray dust out. Heat sinks are clean. That uh, air uh, duct set up under here. These things need a little wipe, but the inside is all clean. Got a nice big blast of dust out. So that was good to see. What's this? From this, are these lights? This thing, it has, uh, we got three wires going in there. My guess is it's 
lights, operation lights maybe. Does that pop out? Oh yeah, there's, let's see if we can, here we go. Infrared detector, maybe. Let's see. Let's. And this is why I always wanted one to take apart because I always just wanted to see how the inside worked. Never. Never really got to see inside of one of these when I really wanted to. When I repaired the one, it was before I really knew what I was dealing with. Oh, wow. Look at that. So now we know there's two infrared receivers. So each corner, I'll let you guys get a good look at those. Each corner on the back, there's one on that side too. Right here for picking up a remote control signal. This one, since I took it out of the holder, you can see there's a pair. And it looks like they just tie the... Uh, data line together as they're not having I think that was just three wires yeah so they're combining the uh, the data lines because you have power oh, come on focus you have power ground and signal coming out of these receivers and they're tying the signals together it would make sense you're you know you're catching the same uh, the same signal for that's coming through, so it's not like you really need to. Let's slide that back in. That'll pop back into here. This will again slide back down and it will latch back in like that there we are so that's back in and we can put this back panel back on I'm gonna reattach this we've got the uh, power cable right here plug that in and then the rest of it I'll plug in once I set this back into place. Just drops in. There's no fasteners holding it at this point. Put our serial ATA cables that seem like they go nowhere back into place. Must be for an option. This one doesn't have this uh, series, a Division 30. There's different sub variants. There's an XC, an XL, XS, I think. There's XC and XL, I know for sure, because the uh, listing for this actually said it was an XC, which is only 2700 lumen, but then I noticed on the serial number label on the bottom, it said XL. So, pretty sure this is the XL. I will check the firmware once we fire it up. So, before I put the uh, upper cover back on, let's tuck that back in. We're going to put the uh, lamp assemblies back in. And then we'll fire it up and see what happens. And this is how to put the lamp assemblies in. You get your lamp assembly, make sure it has that reddish coating on the lens. If you don't see that, throw the lamp away. We're not gonna do that though, this is a good one. We're gonna line up the three holes with the three pins. And I don't remember which one was lamp one or lamp two. You see some marks on the bottom here is H0. Uh, that's like quality stuff, I guess, but it doesn't really matter. The, uh, the chips hold the lamp time, so it doesn't really matter if I switch them. They're still going to run the same way. So you take them, you slide them in until it stops. You'll feel it stop. Then using your finger or a flathead, 
you want to turn those latches 90 degrees clockwise. That grips that little tang on the end. Same thing on this one. See that goes in all the way. You can almost see the chipboard. You can see it wiggling under there. That's now hitting the uh, memory connector. So again, right turn 90 degrees. They're in. So then when I close door number two, push that switch. Now I can't close these because there's nothing to close them into. But I'm going to see if I have anything I can use just to hold them in place so that we can at least try it. Okay, I have a little plastic spudger that I made. That may actually work just perfect. Let's line those up. It's going to set it up there, and I'll use that screw hole and then the spudger, and that holds those perfectly in place. I like that. All right, I'm going to spin this around, and then let's uh, plug it in. We're going to plug that in, and then this display should wake up. We have all kinds of stuff waking up inside. I saw LEDs flickering everywhere as things wake up. Saw that. All right, it just woke up. Test firing its fans, I assume. Under here, there's some fans down in there. Yep. Uh, you guys can see the LCD flickering. I can't see that in person. But I heard the, uh, I believe the shutter close. Let's see source oh, let me get you guys down so you can see yeah, we have none of better. that stuff because it's off but we can scroll down and look at the settings so it does I did put the lamps back in the original spot because the first lamp did have 357 hours and the second lamp when I first installed it had zero hours and now it has two obviously hmm curious Look at that. When I do that, it makes a screen wobble. Oh, it'll lose connection. Loose connection. Let's wake that back up. Shutter is open. And the lens installed is a wide zoom lens, 1.24 to 1.6. Here's all our network info. The HCP is off 1 dot projector port 1025. So I go to 192.168.1.90 colon 1025. Let's see, total operating time, 18,192 hours. That's roughly 9 or 10 lamps. That's quite a bit. But the fact there's no bad uh, pixels in the DMD is a testament to the uh, construction and how well they took care of it. So let me uh, move you guys, get a better shot set up, and we're going to turn it on. All right, so now we have it ready to start. So I have nothing plugged in. That's okay. I'm just going to hit power. You can hear everything firing up. We have both lamps coming up. I can hear the color wheels. I hear fans. I see fans. I even see on the wall. It says warming up. You guys can't read that, but it says warming up. Take my word for it. So once it's warmed up, we can go into the menu. There we go. You can see digital projection. Let's see if I can focus it this close. That's. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Let's see. Focus.
focus. Okay, I have this too close to the wall. I'm trying to get the uh, menu into focus here, but I don't think that's going to happen. Let's see, we're getting a little close, but I'm right at the edge of the bench now. So that's not going to work. We're going to have to move this to a different spot. So let me turn it off. I'm going to let this cool down and then we'll move it to the other side with the cover off and then we'll set it up on the screen and see what it looks like. All right, you hear it warming up. Well, warming up for standby. All right, let's fire it up. Fans coming on, ballast firing. Color wheels spinning. Big motor down there. What is that? Left and right. I guess that's lens shift. What we have over here U and D up and down. All right. And this is the uh, cable to the actual lens motors. So. See if you guys, you can see that reflection on my hand. That's it saying warming up. There's it saying digital projection. There's all the dust. And uh, let's get you guys looking at the screen. All right, so there's the screen. You can see it's uh, not quite easy to see. Let's get the uh, focus. That's pretty good. And now, let's see if I can zoom it in a little. I don't know if this will fit on my screen at home. All right, so that's as small as I can get it to zoom in. But it really does have a nice picture. Um, I need to set up a little test video for this um, Raspberry Pi that I use. A lot of light bleed with the top off, but, you know, is that really all that surprising? And here's the inside. Got a lot of light over there. Okay, after the color wheels, it feeds that light all into here. Where we got some, we got a big old DMD down in there. Actually, it's not that big, but it's 1080, 1920 by 1080. But I'll see you guys in an hour. And that ran great. Ran beautifully. The uh, Wi-Fi card kept cutting out. So I'm going to hook up a wired network over here. Just to eliminate that. And then hopefully this thing will be more useful. But let's turn this off. See the lamps turn off. I'll let these fans all cool it down. And then we can set the uh, top back on and put the screws back in and I can move on to the uh, other pile of stuff I got to do today so I'll be right back as soon as these fans turn off all right so the internal fans are off the uh, air chest that air cavity underneath just blasted its fan for a little bit so I think we're good let's remove my little little piece there. Actually, I'm going to keep that together so I don't lose it. Let's set this back on. This one's cracked a little. So 
I gotta be careful. All right, let me, uh, let's pull that out. I don't want to short anything out. good. I'm going to fire it up one more time just to make sure all that stuff's in the right place. Standby is happy. Oh, let me turn my clutch down far enough. All right, that looks good. We have light warming up. I just have three more screws to put back in and then uh, I call it good. I had to seat that a little better, the, uh, the remote control part. But now you can see all those screws are in. There we go. All right, so now this projector is ready to be used. These are the cables that came with it. I got a nice HDMI cable that came with it, a VGA cable, and a power cord, which was originally for a Cisco something or other. So this power cord was probably about 100 bucks when it was new. Let's see how fancy it looks. There's the part number. Anybody who's a Cisco person wants to look up these part numbers and tell me what it really cost. I'd be curious, but being that it's Cisco, there's the part number. And there's more part info. So if anybody can tell me what that really cost, I'd be curious. Uh, but like I said, since it's labeled as Cisco, it's probably like 100, 150 bucks. So this stuff I'm gonna keep with it. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it home and use it for a bit. Hopefully my... So once I take it home to use it, hopefully my wife won't look at me like I'm any crazier than she normally does. Um, it's, you know, really not too big. I mean, it's way bigger than what I currently use, but, you know, it's nice. And how many people can say they use a digital projection, large venue projector, for their home theater projector, you know? I'll be able to say that, and then whoever buys this from me will be able to say it. So, you know, if you have uh, any questions about your digital projection D-Vision 30 series, or really any projector that takes that type of lamp assembly, uh, but most importantly, thank you for watching.